The digestive system. Our digestive system is a combination of mechanical and chemical actions. Imagine putting your food in a petri dish, chopping it up and exposing it to a bunch of chemicals and microbes. Can you imagine what it would look like in the end? This is what the digestive system does. Mouth. The journey down the alimentary canal begins in the mouth. Here, the food is broken down into smaller chewable pieces. Chewing breaks the food into pieces while the saliva mixes with food to begin the process of breaking it down into a form your body can absorb and use. Rolling action of the tongue and secretion of saliva rolls food into a bolus. The saliva contains water, electrolytes, antibacterial components and enzymes such as the amylase. Amylase converts carbohydrates into sugars. Throat The throat is the region where the mouth cavity and the nasal passages join. Swallowing pushes the food through the throat, or pharynx, and into the esophagus. An important function of the throat is that it prevents the food from entering into the trachea, more commonly known as the windpipe. When the food enters our throat, the larynx, or our voice box, closes. This results in epiglottis covering the entrance of the trachea, or windpipe. The epiglottis is a flap of tissue. Esophagus now that the food has reached the esophagus, a wave of smooth muscle contractions occurs, pushing the food into the stomach. These smooth muscle movements are called peristalsis. The importance of sphincter muscles. Three types of sphincter muscles help in the digestive system. Here, at the junction of the esophagus and the stomach, is a thick ring of circular, smooth muscle that prevents the movement of food pass from esophagus into the stomach. It is called the esophageal sphincter. Another sphincter muscle, the pyloric sphincter directs the passage of food from the stomach into the intestine. The third sphincter muscle surrounds the anus, stomach. Most of us eat our food in a matter of minutes, but digesting it can take hours. One of the important functions of our stomach is to store food until it is digested. Food can be stored here for two to six hours. It also kills the microorganisms we consume unconsciously, along with our food, and begins the digestion of the proteins we took in our diet. The stomach secretes gastric juice, hydrochloric acid, water, mucus, pepsin, and renin that continue the process of breaking down the food. Pepsin is secreted as pepsinogen by cells in the gastric glands that are present in the deep folds of the stomach lining. Other cells in the gastric glands produce hydrochloric acid, which has a pH balance between 1 and 3. The low pH helps convert pepsinogen to pepsin and is also the right pH for pepsin's enzymatic action. Hydrochloric acid, or HCl, also helps break the bonds holding the ingested contents together. The breakdown of these food contents exposes more surface area to the action of pepsin and later to the other digestive enzymes in the small intestine. Mucus secreted by the stomach lines the walls of the stomach and protects them from being digested by HCl and pepsin. If this coating is eroded at some place of the stomach, for instance by the attack of bacteria Helicobacter pylori, it can cause an ulcer. Contractions of the smooth muscles in the walls of the stomach roll around its contents, mixing partly digested food with enzymes and acids. This acidic, fluid mixture of gastric juice is called chyme. Peristaltic movements of the stomach walls push chyme towards the end of the stomach. These waves of peristalsis cause the pyloric sphincter to relax briefly so that very little amounts of chyme can enter the small intestine. In this way, our stomach empties itself gradually over a period of almost four hours. The small intestine works on a small amount of food at a time. Small intestine. Pushed by the peristaltic motion from the stomach, the food then enters the small intestine. The small intestine is a long, loosely coiled tube in the abdomen. The small part in the name refers to its diameter, which is around 2.5 cm on average, about half of the large intestines. If the coil is stretched, it can reach 6 meters or 20 feet long. Its inside lining is covered with such structures that increase the surface area inside significantly and can cover around a quarter of a badminton court. Also, the small intestine's job in the digestion process is by no means small. Let's say we can slightly unwind and split the small intestine using our markers into three parts based on their specific structures and functions without our character here feeling uncomfortable. The first, shortest part of the small intestine, which only spans to around 25 centimeters, is the duodenum. Then comes the 2.5 meters long jejunum and ended with the 3 meters long ileum.
When the duodenum receives the process chyme from the stomach, bicarbonate ions quickly spring into action to first neutralize the stomach acid. Then the enzymes, amylase from the pancreas, lactase, maltase, and sucrase produced by the walls of the duodenum, along with the bile from the liver, digest the food further. The amylase digests the remaining complex carbohydrate into the disaccharides, which are converted further by their disaccharidase namesakes into its constituents. The bile breaks down fat or lipid globules into an emulsion to create more contact area, so the lipase enzyme from the pancreas can work on it more efficiently and break it further into glycerides and fatty acids. The pancreas also produces proteolytic enzymes that convert peptides to amino acids. The next digestive process is the absorption of nutrition, which starts at the end of the duodenum. This small part of the duodenum walls absorbs the trace elements, then it falls to the jejunum to absorb most of the nutrients that have been broken down completely, such as amino acids and monosaccharides. The next part of the small intestine, the ileum, absorbs whatever nutrients remain from the jejunum, mostly B12 vitamins, and recycles the bile salt. Water-soluble vitamins, such as the Bs and C, have their own transporter. Meanwhile, lipid-soluble vitamins, along with the lipid and the water itself, enter our body by diffusion throughout the walls of the small intestine. Pancreas Aside from secreting digestive enzymes into the small intestine to help with the breaking down of protein, fat, and sugar, the pancreas is also responsible for producing hormones that control the level of sugar in our blood. Watch our Diabetes Mellitus video for more explanation. Liver The largest internal organ participates actively in the digestive system by producing fat-processing bile, which is stored in the gallbladder for concentrated use. The liver also acts as a filter for the blood that flows from the digestive system, separating the toxins and dangerous substances from the absorbed nutrients. We've covered a deeper version of the liver topic in our channel if you want to know more. After about three to six hours in the small intestine, what is left of the food you ate is handed over to the more spacious large intestine, or the famous colon, where it would be stockpiled for up to five days. Large intestine. The colon is a 1.5 meters or around six foot long muscular tube that surrounds the small intestine. It's made up of five sections. The cecum, the ascending colon or right colon, the transverse colon, or a cross colon, the descending colon, or left colon, or the sigmoid colon, whose name comes from its S-shape, or sigma in Greek. Finally, it connects to the rectum. Peristalsis motion starts this final process by bringing the leftover waste, stored to be, from the small intestine to the colon. Although it seems that all the nutritious portions of food have been absorbed in the small intestine, the large intestine still holds a large role for our body. The chyme is first introduced to the colon in a form of liquid from which the water contents will be absorbed by the colon wall. Water moves through the wall because of the osmotic gradient created in the process of electrolytes absorption that occurs at the same time. As water is absorbed, the fecal matter solidifies and, due to increased bile concentration, becomes brownish in color. The colon, which has lower bile acid concentration, is the place where we rely heavily on a successful form of symbiosis. In return for letting the gut microbiota make home to our colon and feast on our food remains, they support us with many beneficial products and excellent services. They produce vitamins, help regulate many metabolism processes, enhance our immune defense, prevent gut diseases, and may even affect our brain's psychological conditions. We have animated some of them in more detail in our other videos. Go check our channel! After finishing its journey in the colon, which lasts around 36 hours, the solid stool is formed. The stool is then stored in the sigmoid colon until the mass movement empties it into the rectum once in 12 to 24 hours. But it's not always the case. Disorders inside the colon, such as the imbalance of gut microbiota, may lead to our stool becoming watery or may cause diarrhea, which is a condition when the colon excretes the stool more than three times per 24 hours. Rectum the rectum, which is Latin for straight, is a 20cm or 8-inch long chamber with around 4cm diameter that connects the sigmoid colon to the anal canal. It is tasked to receive and store the stool from the colon. As it receives more stool, the rectal wall expands and activates its stretch receptor, which in turn contracts the external sphincter to prevent any unwanted leaks or droppings. There are many names. It also relaxes the internal anal sphincter and sends a message to the brain to urge you to defecate. If the brain rejects the message, the rectum will contract and result in reverse peristalsis, 
forcing the stool to move back to the colon to reduce the load pressure and the stretch on the rectum. However, this will cause the stool to undergo water reabsorption again, which makes it drier and may lead to constipation. When you're finally ready to let go, the abdominal muscle contracts to increase the inside pressure of your body. The puborectalis muscle and external anal sphincter relax, and the stool, pushed by the rectum, will flow to the anal canal and continue outside. During the process of passing the stool, squatting is the most desirable position, as it gives you the straighter anorectal canal, lessens the pressure required to pass the stool, and makes the overall process faster. And that's the end of our journey through the alimentary canal. Thank you for being patient and excited during our long trip. Eat mindfully, drink enough water, and exercise to keep this wonderful system working. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.